Hello, I'm Dave Abram. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this episode, we'll show you a new look for the county's job program and take a trip to Flint, Michigan with an Odenton man. But first, making headlines this week. A former basketball star made a special appearance this week at Southern High School, but it wasn't to shoot hoops or sign autographs. Former NBA player Chris Heron came to talk about how drug addiction ruined his career and nearly his life. He brought a powerful message to students and certainly got their attention. The pills that you and your friends take, the pills that you see at your parties, those pills kill twice as many people per year combined than crack and heroin. But for some reason you think you're cool taking Xanibars in the thirties. Twice as many people per year die from it than heroin and crack. Yet it's okay if you're popping pills in your body is. Next time you see a friend doing it, just pull that friend aside and say, I need to know, as a friend who's known you your whole life, why you're chasing death for feeling it. Why would you chase death for that feeling? Heron started using drugs at age 14 when he was already a basketball prodigy. He left his college team at Boston College to enter rehab and continued his struggle in the NBA playing for the Denver Nuggets and the Boston Celtics. Now Heron has started Project Purple, where students wear purple t-shirts to publicly promise they will not use drugs and alcohol. You can find out more about Chris Heron by watching the ESPN program 30 for 30 or by visiting theheronproject.org online. We'll also post portions of his presentation online and on Arundel TV. Looks like powerful stuff, Dave. It really was. This guy is a great public speaker. And, uh, you know, he gets, he hooks the kids with the, the basketball highlights. You know, you see him, you know, he's a, he's a you know, 6'4 guard, uh, white guy, and he's, you know, throwing down dunks and he's, you know, setting screens and stuff and just looked like a really exciting player and that's when you could see the kids kind of connect and then he got serious as a heart attack and I'll tell you what there were some kids in there giggling and he would just point at them and just stare them down until he had them and uh, it's really worth watching and I'm really glad we were able to to get it on tape and uh, we'll be showing it for folks and um, it was a very very good presentation he had me going well, I'm the glad guy that had a rough life. he was able to take an experience such as what he had and take it and use a positive spin to be a good role model. So, mm -hmm. and Boston accent never hurts. Yeah, you can really intimidate people with a yeah. Boston accent done correctly. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. Well, we have another event coming up next week dealing with heroin addiction, and hopefully, we can get everyone involved. If you're not on Twitter yet, now would be a good time to join. Then mark your calendar for Tuesday, February 23rd at 9 p.m. That's when PBS show Frontline will air a special two-hour episode called Chasing Heroin. We are so sure that this show will move you that we're going to be live tweeting throughout the presentation. Live tweeting, Kristen. Have live you done tweeting. that? I gotta be honest, I still don't have a Twitter account. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Well, you can watch the show, and Kristen Logano will watch it as well because she's going to get a Twitter <laughs> account. You can watch the show along with County Executive Steve Shu, Police Chief Tim Altamari, uh, Health Officer Jidlene Chan and Mobile Crisis Team Director Jen Corbin. They will be tweeting their observations during the show and you can join the conversation. You can find our handle at AA County GOVT on Twitter. From 9 o'clock to 11 o'clock on February 23rd, we will be discussing the show and the heroin epidemic happening locally. We're using the hashtag Chasing Heroin. So come online and talk to us about it. Well, Dave, on to a, another health matter. How do you feel about holistic health? I, you know, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. I, I Are you always, at all uh, familiar with holistic yeah, health? Yeah, the crystals and the, <laughs> the incense and the herbs and stuff all like right. that. And like, <laughs> like uh, you know, when, whenever I have a cold or something going on, I always look up the holistic first. To right, see it's nice to see what you can take care of yourself mm -hmm. before having to, to make a, an appointment with the doctor. Right. Well, this weekend there is an event for you and it's free. The WRNR Holistic Health Fair free oh. will be held tomorrow, February 20th at the Lowe's Hotel in Annapolis. Nice hotel. 
The fair yes. will be held from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. The event will feature organic food and drinks, workshops, alternative and complementary therapies, lectures, and demos. So, Dave, what's your favorite home re remedy? Uh, what's it called? Uh, wheat germ. Wheat germ. Yeah, wheat germ. It, it, it cures pretty much anything. All right. Um, what about you? Do you have any? I'm sure the Lagana family has several of them. Yeah, yeah. Like, aren't you supposed to like have a shot of whiskey or I was something? Say, if alcohol you have a fever? kills germs, so you know, right. tequila, vodka. Mine probably is sleep. I think sleep, sleep. is probably my favorite. Is that on the list of home remedies? <laughs> um, I love tea. Hot okay. Tea. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm for a big your, believer. For your vocal cords. Yes, I love. There's a, a line a throat coat. Is a great tea. Um, mm. It uses, I forget the name of the root right now. You and Mariah. Um, slippery elm bark. Slippery elm oh, bark. That so, sounds fantastic. Yes. I'm sure it tastes um, terrible. But it's great. No, it's, it's very right. good. Um, I also uh, see a chiropractor. So, and that's a big part of holistic health because wow. when you're having an issue with one of your joints, sometimes you need an adjustment. Um, and therapeutic massage is great too. So, I'm a fan. Interesting, interesting. I'm a fan. Well, and you know, it's always good to look at all the options and not just stick with one thing. Right. So, holistic offers a lot of things. It's holistic, whole We're not saying everything approach. cures everything. Right. But, you know, it's not bad to look at different options. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break. And when we return, we'll talk to Anne Arundel, Workforce Development Corporation CEO, Kirk Murray. Take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town, and we'll be right back. television you haven't even brought a sofa yet a motorcycle when your father finds out he's gonna flip his shoes with two buckles what do you even need two buckles for mr. big shot buying whiskey shots for everybody in the bar from the looks of it I'd say nobody even remembers feed the pig Welcome back. Joining us on the program this week, we have Kirk Murray in the studio. Hello. Hi, thanks for having me. Mr. Murray, you are president and CEO of Anne Arundel Workforce Development Corporation. Yes, I am. And can you explain to us what AAWDC is all about? Okay. Well, AAWDC is one of the best kept secrets here in the county to helping both job seekers and businesses. We build success for our businesses um, here in the county by helping them get the skilled workforce that they need, help them upskill their existing workforce, and help them with talent management. We help individual county residents to get the skills that are in demand by those businesses so that they can either enter the job market or move up in the job market. And we do that through our 13 different initiatives that we have that focus on different populations, everything from people who have lost their jobs and no fault of their own, or individuals who are new to the workforce that uh, want to get um, you know, good jobs and move up on those jobs, or someone who's you know, at that job and say, I know I can do better, I want to do better. We work with them to help them get those skills. Uh, we work with older uh, workers, people 55 and plus. We have over 1,500 people in that category that we work with a year. Um, so people coming to our career centers, we have four career, four career centers throughout the county. Uh, of course, right here, located here um, in Glen Burnie, down in, um, down in Arnold at Arnold Station. We're also, we have a regional career center that we share with Prince George's and Howard County over in Laurel. And then we also, we're one of only four places in the country that have a career center in an airport. So we're located on the ground level of BWI where we work with job seekers who are looking for employment at the airport and businesses who are looking for people. You know, now after 9-11, you know, a lot of businesses are behind security. So we're in front of security and we help um, connect people to job opportunities out at the um, airport. I wasn't and, aware of the airport one, and, and that's and really it's, great. It's everything, Chris. I mean, it's, you know, how to dress for an interview, how to answer yeah. questions, how to ask questions, what to wear, what to, uh, uh, how to get a security clearance. Um, 
Every, everything, how to write a resume. How to write Everything you could possibly need to know to get a job. You go to AWDC and they have all of that. Well, I, yeah, I thought it was really interesting because you were also saying that um, you, you supply um, services for businesses as well. And what kind of services would that be? Well, businesses, we help them find that skilled workforce. We save them time and money by finding that right candidate for us. Businesses come to us and they say, hey, listen, I'm looking for this. We will source our database and we'll look for people who meet that skill. So they're not going through a bunch of resumes. When we send someone to a business, we, you know, that business can ensure that that person has about 90% of what they're looking for. You know, of course, it's always up to the business about who they hire, but we go through, we, uh, our business services team, they work with businesses, not only to find the skills, but also the culture of the company to make sure that individual is the right fit. So, you know, that's one of the main things that we do for businesses. We also now can help them upskill their existing workforce. So if businesses, I mean, here in the Anne Arundel County area, you have a lot of government contractors. You know, the qualifications of contracts are always changing. You know, there's new certifications, new technology. So we can help people up, businesses upskill their existing workforce. That's great. So, Kirk, tell us about, I think I, I read recently that nationwide the unemployment rate is below 5%. Is that right? Well, what's the job market like locally right now? Well, here in Anne Arundel County, the unemployment rate is at about 3.9%. That's amazing. And that's down that's a lot. Really in good. February of 2010, we were above 7% unemployment. Wow. So in that that's time period, we've come down. You know, Anne Arundel County, you know, we have a lower unemployment rate than both the state of Maryland and nationally. So we're doing good. And, you know, there are over um, 15,000 job openings out there right now. So, you know, we're almost getting to that point where we're having an opposite effect, where businesses are looking to hire, but they can't find individuals with those skills. So, you know, we what help be doing that. Match. Of that? Well, for example, in IT, I mean, uh -huh. you know, and, and part of that is the fact of where we're located and the requirements of the security clearance and things like this. You're correct. We do work with individuals to help them. We don't get them a security clearance, but we help them understand the process. Mm -hmm. And that's part of it. Part of it is just making sure that when you're applying for a security clearance, that you answer the questionnaire cor uh, correctly and accurately and, and fully. And uh, we teach our customers how to do those type of things. Uh, we have other workshops that teach people how to brand. I mean, right now, you really got to sell yourself. I mean, you know, you got to be able to show how you can make a difference for uh, a business. One of the things that we teach our customers is not just do you have the skills, but how you can help that business's bottom line. We like for our, our, our candidates that we work with to basically be able to show that value added that they bring to a business. Well, I guess you, you talk the talk and walk the walk because you're rebranding yourselves right now. We are. And uh, AWDC, you have a, a new marketing effort and a new branding campaign. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, AWDC, we, you know, one of the things that we teach our job seekers is that you have to rebrand yourself. You have to be fresh. You have to be modern. You have to go with the time. So we needed to walk, like you said, we need to do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So we've rebranded our website. Um, and it's www.aawdc.org. We, we encourage both uh, all your uh, viewers to go out and, uh, view, and look at our website. There's a lot of information about the different workshops we have, the different training opportunities that we have, and what's going on here in the county as far as labor market and job opportunities. And we can, uh, we'll put the new logo up on the screen too. Tell us a little bit about the logo. Logo is something that we, it, I never knew how hard it was to come up with a logo. <laughs> it is so hard. It is so, so hard. hard to yes. come up with a logo. But we wanted something that really showed success and movement, that we move people, that we connect people. We're that bridge to success. So we wanted something to show that. We wanted people to get that AWDC out there. You know, Anne Arundel Workforce Development Corporation is a mouthful. Yeah. So we just want people to know AWDC when I'm looking for a job to go to AAWDC. If I'm a business and I'm looking to hire, go to AAWDC. So we just wanted those letters to be out there. So we're very proud of it. And it's got a, a technolo technology feel to it too because it has that kind of EKG sort of look. Exactly. Yeah. We have to stick with the brand of the county. You know, this mm -hmm. is a high technology county, you know, a county that's moving forward. You know, the county that has high hopes for this county and moving us forward. So we wanted AAWDC to fit right into that brand. Kirk, for folks out there that are watching and are thinking, you know, I, I'm looking for a new job, some of the skills that Dave mentioned about uh, interview process, resume building, what are, what are three tips you can give for folks out there looking for a job right now? Well, the first thing is to really deep, reach deep down inside with you and really look at what do you really want to do. You know, one of the reasons why we do still have people unemployed is because they're still thinking that the job that they were doing before is going to come back. Some of, these some of the jobs that were before the recession are not coming back. 
Also, people have to have a reality check. You may have been making 100 plus before. You might not necessarily be making 100,000 in your new jobs or jobs. I mean, we do have customers that you know, do get job offers and turn them down because they weren't making the same salary they were before. You gotta really understand your finances and say, just because I was making 100,000 plus, do I really need to make that? Or what are some of the other opportunities that are out there? So it's better than making nothing. It's better than making nothing. <laughs> and then it's skills, making sure that you have the skills that businesses are looking for these days. I mean, you know, here in the county, we deal a lot with IT. IT is always changing. One of the number one uh, things that we do, along with helping people with resume, is that we can pay for people to get upgraded skills, you know, new certification. We work closely with Anne Arundel Community College and other training providers throughout the region that help people with that. Uh, we're in the process of now recruiting people for apprenticeship programs in construction. Construction is one of the industries that, that uh, had the hardest hit during the recession, but it's also one of, the, uh, one of the industries that's coming back the strongest. Just two weeks ago, we had about 15 business owners in construction that come out and talk to us a little bit about what they're looking for. All of them say, I have jobs right now. I'm hiring right now. And you know, construction, you know, everyone says, oh, construction is digging ditches or it's hard work. Construction is changing. I mean, you know, you need technology. Construction is a STEM job. Absolutely. So, you know, where we're always talking about IT and all these STEM jobs, construction is a STEM, STEM job. Construction, people make a lot of money. You know, we're t I've been talking with a business, Cheney Enterprises, and the amount of money that they pay their, um, their dunk truck drivers, it's a good living. Yeah. It's a yeah. good quality of life. It's a good living. So, you know, we, we train people for construction, uh, you know, hotel hospitality. That's another growing industry here in the area. Uh, we work, of course, we work closely with Maryland Live and getting people connected to Maryland Live. So, you know, have that good resume, be realistic, and then make sure you have the skills that businesses are really looking for. It sounds like there's a lot of positive opportunity right now in the county, and you're absolutely right. This is a hidden gem. Uh, if you're looking to hire or be hired, get familiar with AAWDC. Mr. Murray, thank you so much for joining us on thank the Weekly Review. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more. Start a story. Adopt at theshelterpetproject.org. Welcome back. We've all been seeing the tough images out of Flint, Michigan, where people are struggling just to find clean drinking water. Well, one Odenton resident, with the help of his church and his community, decided to take matters into their own hands. Our own Michelle Corkadell talked with him before he embarked on the long drive to Michigan in the middle of the night. Michelle? Thank you, Kristen and Dave. I'm here this afternoon with some very special folks who decided to take their extra time to make a difference for Flint, Michigan victims. As we know, Flint, Michigan has been facing some serious challenges with their water quality lately. And so to help them is one of our vets working here at Fort Meade, Mr. Ron Lee, who did, from Flint, Michigan, did, heard the cause and decided to step up and created 12 drop sites throughout our region, including three right here in Anne Arundel County. And I'm here today at the Kingdom Celebration Center with the bishop of our fine church, local community church here, where they are loading up the truck and getting ready to go to deliver these necessary bottled water and baby goods to the residents of Flint, Michigan. Thank you, Ron, for joining us today. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you. So tell us, Ron, what what was your vision for this and what did you do to step up? Well, it was just too easy. Uh, I'm from Flint and uh, knowing that uh, your family and friends and, you know, your heartstrings are suffering, uh, you just think about what to do and you don't necessarily, necessarily think about the sacrifice, you just get started. And uh, one step after another, uh, it built out to, uh, you know, quite big, quite a big uh, community collection site. But uh, this was the Genesis Point right here at Kingdom Celebration Center. Uh, with uh, Bishop Palmer. Uh, he was the first yes, uh, but he was the first of many, and uh, many joined hands after that. 
So you live um, down in South County with myself in Davisonville, and they stepped up too, didn't they? They did, they did. Uh, the daycare center that my children go to, Crossroads uh, Daycare Facility right off of 214, uh, they uh, said yes. And uh, they took a big group picture with the kids. Uh, Joanna Durbin, the director there, uh, led the team there. I've got more water to pick up there after we finish loading here. So uh, today is a day of collection. Uh, we're passing the charity plate around and everyone's donating water today. So it's not too hard on people, but uh, it's very needful for the folks in Flint. Well, this is definitely a very special way of sharing the love in a month of love with um, Valentine's Day being part of February. Bishop, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the mission work. This seems right up your wheeled house in your church and community. Can you share um, with us some of that? Yes, um, for 21 years now, uh, our church has been doing uh, missions work around the world. Um, but when we heard of the crisis in uh, Flint, Michigan, and when Ron came with the vision um, to uh, escort water to Flint, it became very personal to us, and we have been praying for Flint, Michigan, and uh, but we didn't have the, the the feet to our prayers until Ron came, and uh, and presented the vision to us about him literally driving uh, the water up. And from that point, you know, of course, you know, it was an answer to uh, Ron was an answer to our prayers on how we could actually help, and uh, for so since then, uh, we began to uh, hurry the troops and uh, solicit uh, everybody that's in the uh, communities like uh, Giant uh, Food uh, Store, um, Safeway, um, uh, Sam's Club, uh, even here in this uh, business park area, uh, we had uh, many uh, donate as well. Um, uh, GES Environmental Services donated uh, for uh, the truck, uh, to be able to, you know, to get a truck, and uh, we had many people paying for the gas. Um, so to make it easy, and I, I believe we have uh, over 600 um, cases of water uh, that has been uh, donated so far just from this location, and uh, and there's some still on the way, and hopefully we 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 can get their water before we leave, right? <laughs> before Ron leaves, and uh, so it's just amazing to me to see how the community uh, can come together, and it breaks, uh, it goes beyond barriers, it breaks down. Uh, religious barriers, it breaks down denominational barriers and even racial uh, barriers and uh, so it's amazing to see the love spread like it is uh, with this water drive. And I always say that it's not just a Flint pro uh, problem, it's an American problem, you know. So if we can do missions around the world, definitely we can do missions uh, to help our own. Amen. Bringing it home uh, here in Anne Arundel County and reaching out to those all across America. Thank you so very much, Thank gentlemen, you. for the good work that you are doing. I see our guys are loading up here, um, and we've got lots of volunteers and much more activity going on. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Michelle. Mr. Lee has really built a following, and he is planning a second trip to deliver water. And of course, he has a Facebook page called MD Maryland to Flint Water Drive. Lee delivered, get ready for this, 3,300 cases of water. That's a lot of water. It is, and what a great way to help out, and we know there will be more to come from this group. It was really nice to meet these guys. They were, um, Mr. Lee and, and the pastor up there in Odenton, um, they, we asked him how he, what he was gonna do, and he just said, I don't know, I just figured out one step at a time. I thought, okay, I wanna bring water, and then, okay, what is this and this and this, and he ends up with this 3,300 cases mm -hmm. of water. It's just amazing what what can be accomplished when one person has their passion sparked by something. And it's phenomenal that he felt compelled to do something and he set himself his mind to do it and 3,300 cases of water have now we been delivered to Flint. We always see this in Anne Arundel County. Is it me or is it, I mean, does this place we raise have a them, really we good... We raise them all right here. Yeah, people really step up around yep. here for things like yep. that. They <laughs> really do. So we had a big weekend, yes. as you know, one yes. of one of my favorite events. A big, big night at the Lagana household is the Grammys. The Grammys. So what did you think? Good, bad, A, B, C, what? Uh, well, you know, something I thought was unique that I hear they're doing for the Oscars this year, and I think that they should try and... Um, Which I never watch. I, I know. It, it, the Oscars are always so much more stretched out even than the Grammys. Mm -hmm. um, they're actually going to take the lists that folks have, you know, when you thank all the people you have to thank, and they're going to scroll them across the screen. Oh, God. So it'll cut down on speaking time and all these folks that keep getting cut off by the music. 
Um, of course, they get up there, and, and some are really surprised. Some learned that they already received the award. Um, so I understand that, but it, it just kind of gets um, just so a little you, monotonous. You didn't with, like it? No. How, how, what did you think of Gaga, okay, your girl? The Bowie tribute uh, was underwhelming for me. She always delivers a, a great performance, but I thought um, entertainment-wise, I, I tell you what, it's a good measure when I'm not paying attention if I'm on the cell phone. And uh, the, the beginning of that performance had me, the end had me. Other than that, I didn't really look up from my phone screen. Yeah, so. I, guess I, I guess I would agree with that. I mean, certainly when it started, it got my attention. And I yeah. said, oh, this, this is really cool. This is a great idea. Mm -hmm. and yeah, I will say singing. out of all was the musicians, no, but I will say no. out of all the musicians they could have picked, and I understand a lot put their, their name in the hat for this opportunity, she was absolutely the best to do a Bowie tribute. But a lot of folks are making the remark that it was more like Bowie the musical. It was just yeah, it was like a, a little too act. processed, a little too calculated. It didn't feel organic. All right. So best act, worst act. Okay. Of the night. Uh, my, you only my, get one I, best. No, worst. I have to do three. Three? Yeah. Okay. I loved Tori Kelly and James Bay. The performance was raw and made me cry. That was um, really good. That was excellent. The way they harmonized, I, I got hopped right on Facebook. Said these two need to go on tour together and do every song together. Have tour babies. The whole, the whole baggage. Mm -hmm. um, I loved the BB King tribute. Yes. I loved that. I um, it was so nice to see Bonnie Raitt. She's an idol of you mine. Love, I do, love Bonnie Raitt. You like Bonnie Raitt more than Gaga? I do. Well, yes. Absolutely. Okay. She's iconic. Um, and then I really did like the Kendrick Lamar performance. And I can see you why he's so talented. Three. I told you I was going to pick three. Okay, worst. My worst performance. The only thing Pitbull had going for him was Sofia Vergara. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it for you. I went to bed because yeah, I you saw like, the Meh. promos of Pitbull and I was <laughs> like, what? And can you, I, I can remember like my whole life. There's always a headliner on the Grammys that you wait and you wait and yeah. you wait and you want to see it so bad. Right. And the show runs late and it's midnight and you're like, come on, uh, come on. Prince, of course. Right. I don't know what time that show went sure. till, but it was ridiculous. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, so I didn't see Pitbull, but I would say uh, my favorite was what the one you mentioned that was definitely, you know, whenever they strip it down on the Grammys and they, they have, you know, two artists you would never expect to play together. Mm -hmm. That's always when it's the best. Yeah. And so I really liked that performance. I actually really liked Adele, even though she had that some technical so issues. so unfortunate. And I'm not a big Adele person, but I it, thought I really it was, don't feel it was her part. Uh, listening to what was going on, because people kept commenting they heard like a guitar sound. A piano has strings, like right. a guitar. And the, the microphone the fell, fell the into strings. the strings and was making that tingy sound. Right. Um, and it was throwing her off. I can understand how it threw her off. What I didn't understand is the camera kept tightening on her. Send somebody up there and fix the thing. You know? Yeah, it like when you're talking on the sh on Weekend Review and I go to the bathroom. Right. right. And then I come back and right. no one even knows I was gone. Someone was saying that somebody tried I to totally fix it. That. It obviously was not fixed. Get it together, it wasn't. I was not thrilled by the Taylor Swift performance, but what? I loved her speech when she received her award. I felt that that was a definite one-two uh, yeah. to Kanye. Kanye deserved so, that. Yeah. Uh, well, since you've you know taken over this segment, I, I'll just <laughs> say it, it saddens me to say that the worst performance of the night was the, what were they called? The no, I won't say that. The old guys. The Hollywood the old vampires, Hollywood vampire. AKA okay. Halloween Pirates of the Caribbean. I am a huge, <laughs> I am a huge Joe Perry guy. Yes. And Joe Perry was great. So I have no criticism of Joe Alice Perry. Alice Cooper looks like he's Alice about to. Alice Cooper, gosh. Um, Fall any minute. And then I didn't hear them announce Johnny Depp. Oh, if you and didn't watch the red carpet, you probably didn't know. My daughter-in-law is a huge Johnny Depp fan, so she Love must have been freaking Johnny out. Depp. I haven't talked to her about this yes. yet, but he didn't look good. Oh, I thought he did. I, he you know did? what? I watched the red carpet. He was somewhat um, very modest and nervous about the fact that he was about to perform. And I think the nerves huh. got to him. But well, he certainly got he, he in kept character. Saying, he kept saying things like, these guys let me play with them. And they were like, no, he's actually really good. And he did, I thought he did a great job. He had that man of few words rock star thing going on. Right. I liked it. So. I'm sure you would never say a critical word about Johnny Depp. Right? Nope. No, Probably not. I didn't think so. <laughs> well, that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archive episodes online anytime on Facebook, YouTube, or Google Plus by simply searching Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county, and we'll see you next time.